Hello. I am the storyteller. And today we will talk about Capri. Capri is an island located in the Tyrrhenian Sea off the Sorrento Peninsula, on the south side of the Gulf of Naples in the Campania region of Italy. The main town Capri that is located on the island shares the name. It has been a resort since the time of the Roman Republic. Some of the main features of the island include the Marina Piccola, the Belvedere of Tragra, the limestone crags called sea stacks that project above the sea, the town of Anacapri, the Blue Grotto, the ruins of the Imperial Roman villas, and the various towns surrounding the island of Capri including Positano, Amalfi, Rivello, Sorrento, Nerano, and Naples. Capri is part of the region of Campania, metropolitan city of Naples. The town of Capri is a comune and the island's main population center. The island has two harbors, Marina Piccola and Marina Grande. The separate comune of Anacapri is located high on the hills to the west. The etymology of the name Capri is unclear, it might be traced back to the ancient Greeks, the first recorded colonists to populate the island. But it could also derive from Latin Capre. Fossils of wild boars have been discovered, lending credence to the Capros etymology. On the other hand, the Romans called Capri Goat Island. Finally, there is also the possibility that the name derives from an Etruscan word for rocky, though any historical Etruscan rule of the island is disputed. Capri consists of limestone and sandstone rock, cliffs form much of the sides and surface of the island. The island has been inhabited since early times. Evidence of human settlement was discovered during the Roman era, according to Suetonius, when the foundations for the Villa of Augustus were being excavated, giant bones and weapons of stone were discovered. The emperor ordered these to be displayed in the garden of his main residence, the Sea Palace. Modern excavations have shown that human presence on the island can be dated to the Neolithic and the Bronze Age. Augustus developed Capri, he built temples, villas, aqueducts, and planted gardens so he could enjoy his private paradise. In his Aeneid, Virgil states that the island had been populated by the Greek people of Teleboi, coming from the Ionian Islands. Strabo says that in ancient times in Capri there were two towns, later reduced to one. Tacitus records that there were twelve imperial villas in Capri. Ruins of one at Tragra could still be seen in the 19th century. Augustus' successor Tiberius built a series of villas at Capri, the most famous of which is the Villa Jovis, one of the best preserved Roman villas in Italy. In 27 AD Tiberius permanently moved to Capri, running the empire from there until his death in 37 AD. In 182 AD Emperor Commodus banished his sister Lucilla to Capri. She was executed shortly afterwards. After the end of the Western Roman Empire, Capri returned to the status of a dominion of Naples, and suffered various attacks and ravages by pirates. In 866 Emperor Louis II gave the island to Amalfi. In 987 Pope John XV consecrated the first bishop of Capri, when Capri, Scala, Minori, and Laetere were made dioceses to serve as suffragans of Amalfi, which thereby became a metropolitan see. Capri continued to be a residential diocese until 1818, when the island became part of the Archdiocese of Sorrento. No longer a residential bishopric, Capri, Capre in Latin, is today listed by the Catholic Church as a titular see. In 1496, Frederick IV of Naples established legal and administrative parity between the settlements of Capri and Anacapri. The pirate raids reached their peak during the reign of Charles V. The famous Turkish admirals Barbarossa Hayreddin Pasha and Turgut Reis captured the island for the Ottoman Empire, in 1535 and 1553 respectively. The first recorded tourist to visit the island was French antiques dealer Jean-Jacques Bouchard in the 17th century. His diary, found in 1850, is an important information source about Capri. French troops under Napoleon occupied Capri in January 1806. The British ousted the French in the following May, after which Capri was turned into a powerful naval base, but the building program caused heavy damage to the archaeological sites. The French reconquered Capri in 1808, and remained there until the end of the Napoleonic era, when Capri was returned to the Bourbon ruling house of Naples. The natural scientist Ignazio Cerio catalogued Capri's flora and fauna during the 19th century. His work was continued by his son, author and engineer Edwin Cerio, who wrote several books on life in Capri in the 20th century. Prior to the First World War the island was extremely popular with wealthy gay men. John Ellingham Brooks and Somerset Mom shared a villa there. Norman Douglas, Friedrich Alfred Krupp, Jacques Dadelsward Fersen, Christian Wilhelm Ahlers, Emile von Bering, Curzio Malaparte, Axel Munta, Louis Cotalin and Maxim Gorky are all reported to have owned a villa there, or to have stayed there for more than three months. Swedish Queen Victoria often stayed there because Axel Munta was her doctor. Rose O'Neill, the American illustrator and creator of the Cupid, owned the Villa Narcissus, formerly owned by the famous Beaux-Arts painter Charles Carroll Coleman. 
Dame Gracie Fields also had a villa and restaurant on the island and is buried there. Mariah Carey owns a villa on the island. In 1908, Lenin was hosted by Maxim Gorky, the Russian author, at his house near the Giardini Augusto. In 1970, a monument by Giacomo Manzu was erected during the centennial celebration in Lenin's honor. Today, Capri has become more of a resort and is visited by tourists during the summer months of July and August. During the later half of the 19th century, Capri became a popular resort for European artists, writers and other celebrities. The book that spawned the 19th century fascination with Capri in France, Germany, and England was Entdeckung der Blauen Grot auf der Insel Capri by the German painter and writer August Kopisch, in which he describes his 1826 stay on the island and his discovery of the Blue Grotto. John Singer Sargent and Frank Hyde are among the prominent artists who stayed on the island around the late 1870s. The English artist and adventurer, John Wood Shortridge, acquired a 14 at Marina Piccola in the 1880s, and married a Capri girl, Carmela Esposito. It is recorded that the only mention of him in a recent book, albeit partially inaccurate, occurs in James Money's Capri, Island of Pleasure. Claude Debussy refers to the island's hills in the title of his impressionistic prelude Les Collines Donna Capri. Capri is the setting for The Lotus Eater, a short story by Somerset Maugham. British novelist Compton Mackenzie lived there from 1913 to 1920, with later visits, and set some of his work on the island. As well as being a haven for writers and artists, Capri served as a relatively safe place for foreign gay men and lesbians to lead a more open life, a small nucleus of them were attracted to live there, overlapping to some extent with the creative types mentioned above. Jacques Dadelsward Furson wrote the Roman A Clef et la Fousetainet sur la mer about Capri and its residents in the early 20th century, causing a minor scandal. Furson's life on Capri became the subject of Roger Perfit's fictionalized biography, L'Exil de Capri. A satirical presentation of the island's lesbian colony is made in Mackenzie's 1928 novel Extraordinary Women, inspired by the affairs of American painter Romaine Brooks. One of the island's most famous foreign gay exiles was Norman Douglas. His novel South Wind is a thinly fictionalized description of Capri's residents and visitors, and a number of his other works, both books and pamphlets, deal with the island, including Capri and his last work, A Footnote on Capri. Memoirs set on Capri include Edwin Cherio's Aria di Capri, which contains a number of historical and biographical essays on the island, including a tribute to Norman Douglas, the story of San Michel by Swedish royal physician Axel Munta, who built a villa of that name and Shirley Hazard's Green on Capri, a memoir, containing her reminiscences of Graham Greene.